Do you want to know why I decided to turn on the camera this morning and record a video of myself looking like this? It's because I have unstoppable self-confidence. And if you want to figure out exactly how, keep watching. You have to say hi to the puppy and the floor that's not mopped. Hi, puppy. Come back. Hi. Look at the camera, puppy. You're so pretty. Oh. get it. These YouTubers that we see, they're absolutely glowing. The models we see on Instagram, they're absolutely glowing. They're stunning. Everybody is stunning. Everybody but me is stunning. True? Not true. And that's exactly why I decided to challenge myself to record videos of myself and live streams on Facebook and Instagram looking at at the point where I feel my worst, just so I can challenge myself to step out of my comfort zone and see the value in the words that I have to say rather than my physical appearance because there is so much more than the superficial BS of our physical appearances. But on a serious note, I do have work pretty soon and I just wanted to look like this to record the intro to make a point. But I'm gonna go actually get ready now and then record the rest of this. Hey guys, I'm so happy that you're here, and I would introduce myself, but clearly I'm so famous, I don't need an introduction. Just kidding, my name is Eden Gold, I'm a body image and self-esteem health coach, and I asked some of you guys on my Instagram page, at EdenGold underscore, if you wanted me to do a video all about self-confidence and how to radiate self-confidence, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Here's one thing that I wanted to point out really quickly before diving into the tips that I have for you today. One of the things that you get out of having unstoppable, undeniable self-confidence is your physical appearance does not matter nearly as much. I know that statement alone might not be relevant to everybody, but a large portion of the people that I talk to are people who have struggled with things like food-related addictions and body confidence and self-esteem. And they're just not operating as their highest self because the way that they look or the way that they feel that they look dictates whether or not they're happy. I'm going to give you a quick example. The last couple of days, I haven't been feeling that great about my body. And I know why, because I've been eating literally all the chips. I mean, all the chips. And I know that, but I've still been incredibly happy. And I was trying to figure out why, because in my past, I would always let the way that I felt that I looked dictate if I was going to be happy that day, that week, that month, six years, whatever. And so I was trying to figure out why am I so happy right now? I wake up every morning with a smile on my face and even though I'm not feeling my best or I don't think that I look my best, I'm still happy. And then I realized it's because I have so much confidence in myself and my physical appearance is so irrelevant to the rest of what life has to offer that I'm just a happy person. And I am a happy person. Developing a really strong and resilient mindset when it comes to things like body image. And of course I still have my down days, but one of the benefits of being so confident in yourself is that that's irrelevant. There's so much more to you and you have so much more value. That's my dog. What was I saying? You have so much more value outside of just what you look like. And that's exactly why I filmed the intro that I did. Because I want to challenge myself to step out of my comfort zone and break the patterns of not feeling so great about myself so I can learn to appreciate the value of the words that I say rather than my appearance. So with that being said, we're going to hop straight into the couple of tips that I have for you guys and I hope that you like them and if you do and you like these videos all about empowerment then please like this video it would really help me out as I'm just getting started and trying to reach this message to a large audience so here we go number one not two when we're not confident we don't trust in the decisions that we make we don't trust in ourselves and we always seek validation from other sources to dictate how we feel or who we are as a person. That's why when we're scrolling through Instagram and we compare ourselves to other people, it's because we lack that validation in ourselves. And we lack that trust in ourselves. The more confident you are, the less the opinions of others matters and gets to you. So we want to build up that trust and build up that confidence. If you want to love yourself exactly the way you are now, Here's two things that you can do. The first thing you can do, make a list of 10 things that you value about yourself. Sit down and write a list of 10. I don't care what they are, but I know there is 10. I was talking to my friend one time and I told them to do that. And they basically laughed at me like, ha ha, there's not 10 things I value about myself. And I was like, oh, there damn sure is. 
I don't care if it's your charisma. I don't care if it's your eyelashes or just your left eyelash, like whatever. You have 10 things that you value about yourself. Force yourself to see the good and not the bad. Train your brain to look towards the positive side of things. I'm really doing a lot with my hands right now. Bear with me. The next thing you can do, we focus, by the end of our day, we always focus on what we didn't accomplish and what hasn't been marked off of our to-do list. So rather than being stressed out about what didn't get completed, focus on what has gotten done and what is completed. So you can even check in with yourself and say, well, what did I accomplish today? What did I get done today? That alone will train your brain to just slowly start thinking towards the more positive side of things so you're not always solely focused on the negative. You will slowly build that trust in yourself by doing this. If you were meant to get more done that day, you would have gotten more done that day, but you did it, so don't worry about it. I know it's hard not to live in the past, but that's just something small that you can do. I took some notes, let me write it, let, let, me, let me look at him. Number two, if somebody is giving you criticism, rather than seeing that as you're a failure or being really down on yourself about it, use it as an opportunity to learn and to grow. What can you learn from the situation? How can you take this information that you're getting, whether it's a direct criticism or not indirect, like let's say um, a breakup or something. How can you take what you learned from that relationship and learn from it and grow from it so you know more so of what you want for your next relationship? It's only offensive when we find it a personal attack. Now, if somebody's being downright rude or makes a judgment about you, that's different. There's a fine line between constructive criticism and being rude and being judgmental. And that's a whole different story. But what I'm saying is lighten up a little bit. Don't take everything super personally if there's a greater meaning that you can take from it. I have a really good example that I wanna give you guys about my next point. And it's basically about why we have these bad habits that are created because at one point we associated that habit with something good. We don't intentionally try to sabotage ourselves because we want something bad to happen to us. We originally think that we're gonna get something good out of it. Here's an example from a Tony Robbins video that I, pff, God, what a role model, right? To everybody probably. He says, people don't smoke cigarettes to try to get cancer. People don't smoke cigarettes to try to die. But at one point or another, that person associated smoking cigarettes with something good, like a good feeling. Maybe you were stressed out and smoking a cigarette calmed you down. That's not you trying to die. That's you associating that with something good. That's why you created a bad habit that ended up having like reverse effects on you. I didn't mean to put quotes around bad habit because it's, it, it's bad. Or for example, I have a lot of conversations with people who have struggled with eating disorders. And at one point or another, those habits have been developed because we associated behaviors around food with the idea that it would make our physical body look a certain way, look a more desirable way. We weren't trying to get an eating disorder. Our intentions were good. We wanted to get something good out of it. And sure enough, we created a habit and we created this loop around it. And just as Tony says, every form of self-sabotage always comes from a good intent. So just understanding that alone can really help you get a grip on why this is all happening. It's not just you, you're not alone. And I forget what point I had associated with that, but I guess that's just good information. The next thing you can do is play the role of somebody who has unstoppable confidence or undeniable confidence or radiant self-confidence. Cause here's the thing. You know how people always say fake it till you make it? Okay, well, let's elaborate on that a little bit. Our brains don't like to be wrong. We do not like to be wrong. So whatever it is that you're thinking and you're believing, our brain will always try to find reasons that solidify why what we're saying is true and right. Kind of like how every 15 year old thinks they know everything in the world. I sure as heck know I thought I knew everything when I was 15. And now that I'm older, I realize that I didn't know a single thing. I really knew like less than nothing probably. But we always want to believe we're right and we find sources to back that up. Here's an example that might help. When I was in high school, I got kind of into the whole like e-cigarette and vaping thing. And then my parents came at me one time telling me how bad it was for me. They printed articles for me to look at and everything. And sure enough, even though in my brain and deep inside of me, I knew that that was true. I still went on the internet to look for reasons why they weren't bad, why they weren't bad, because my belief said that that's what I wanted to do. So I was trying to back up the reasoning behind why I should keep smoking or e-cigarettes. You know what I mean? How is that relevant to your life? I hope I'm not talking too fast, but oftentimes I find that I just drag on situations. So that's why I'm talking fast. Yeah, so whatever we believe, 
We're going to find reasons to back that up. So if you believe something very badly about yourself or you believe that you aren't confident about yourself, then you're going to always subconsciously find ways to solidify why that is true. Even if you don't mean to, you're always going to. It's kind of like we have those friends who will always comment on the way they look and say, oh, I just look terrible right now. Like, here's an example. If your friend decides not to wear makeup that day and she comments on the fact that her skin just isn't looking that great or maybe she has bags under her under their eyes. Well, why is that a problem? It's a problem because as a society, we've been conditioned to believe that looking that way is not okay. So we developed a belief that we have to look a certain way to be okay. So that might subconsciously lead her to make judgments about the way that she looks when she's not wearing makeup. Does that make sense? Okay, so I walked away from my camera really quickly and I forgot where I was. I really need to take better notes for this. But yeah, the whole point of that was to play the role of somebody who does have that undeniable confidence and unstoppable confidence. And another thing you can do, um, based on the example I was giving before, another thing that you can do to train your brain to think more positively and not and break that subconscious cycle of just being really down on yourself is to catch yourself in the moment and physically change what it is you're saying or what it is that you're thinking. So becoming really increasingly aware of what this voice inside of your head is saying or the things that you tell yourself and just catch it and stop it right there. Break that pattern, interrupt it with something else, with something positive. So eventually over time, you'll really learn and train yourself to see the positive side. And all of these tips I'm telling you are all things that you, oh my bad, are all things that you can practice and all things that you can try to do. See what works for you, see what feels right, but stop the pattern and slowly build up that confidence when you learn to trust yourself more. The last point that I wanna mention is to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. This also ties in with the breaking that habit and doing something else that maybe you're not used to. We like to stay comfortable, we like to stay in our zones or whatever, but break that, get out of that comfort zone. We want to surprise ourselves and surprise our brains so we aren't constantly doing the same thing over and over and over again and we can change it up. We want to keep changing it up and keeping things new and fresh and funky. Just kidding, that was a little excessive. But the point is because we don't want to keep continuously doing the things that do not serve us, whether it's internally or externally. We don't want to continue to act in a way of that habit that we've formed. If you guys want me to make a part two to this, I definitely can. I know I have a lot more tips to share, but I don't know how long this video is and I just wanted to give you guys a couple very prominent ones that came up for me. So. I have a live to do on Instagram right now. Go ahead and follow me at EdenGold underscore. If you're interested in the content that I post, I promise it's, you know, all right. I give myself like an eight out of 10. But other than that, let me know if you like this video. If you did, again, please subscribe to this channel and like this video and do all the other things that you're supposed to do when you like someone. And with that being said, I'm out of here for chips and they're actually quite disgusting. But the crunch really hits the spot.